And welcome back to the second half of a double header here at Wilt Pond Complex in Ann Arbor, Michigan. In that first half of the double header, Michigan was led by Alex Sirocco on the mound and won that one 2 0 with two runs being scored in that second inning. And now Megan Bobian on the mound for Michigan, the second head of that two headed monster for Michigan ahead of that pitching staff. As the first pitch to Jaden McFarland is up and out of the zone. One ball and no strikes to count. Bobian actually faced Maryland yesterday, last night in that contest, as that offering from her is low. She went seven innings, allowed two runs, one earned, and just two hits in the first and seventh innings, and a pair of walks while striking out six Terrapin batters. So a great performance by her. The third pitch, she's starting out the first batter, Jada McFarland, with three straight balls down 3-0 three no, three in the count. As I said, the two-headed monster, Megan Bobian, has a 1.12 ERA this season, along with Alex Sirocco's .47 ERA. She starts out McFarland there with a strike, make it three balls and one strike. So what are you seeing from the last game that you want to carry over to this game, Amir? You know, you want to see the bats kind of wake up. You know, you go back to that second inning where Michigan really was able to open up this game up, and then the bats went silent for the remainder of the game for both sides of this team. And Jada McFarland works a five-pitch walk as that last pitch from Bobian was inside. And that's going to be a leadoff walk for Maryland. They had their leadoff batter on base at the start of last inning, but she quickly was out at second base trying to stretch a single into a double. McFarland staying on first base now for the second batter of the first inning of the second half of the doubleheader. Bobian winds and deals. That's going to be a ball high, and the count is now one ball and no strikes. Five balls in her first six pitches for Bobian. And she doesn't really walk many hitters at all with only 20 on the year as opposed to a 117 strikeouts. She gets a strike there. Make the count one ball and one strike. Only 20 walks and 75 and a third innings pitched. So to start out with five balls in the first six pitches is very uncharacteristic of Megan Bobian. Mm -hmm, that's for sure. Bobian, off-speed pitch and going is McFarland. And the tag is just to the right. McFarland slides under the throw. And she's safe at second as the ball, as the pitch from Bobian was outside the strike zone. So the count is two balls and one strike. Maryland threatening early on with a runner in scoring position after Jada McFarland stole second. Yeah, Maryland right away playing a lot more aggressive this game. You know, they let Michigan control the first two games prior in the first game today. So right away you can see Maryland stealing a base right there and putting a runner in scoring position. McFarland now 8 for 8 on stolen bases on the year. That's a pop up to the shortstop and she's there. Natalia Rodriguez watches the ball go in her glove for the first out of the inning. Set down is Taylor Okada and Reagan Kerr, the number 3 batter in this Maryland lineup, will try to get Jada McFarland in with one out in this inning. Bobian, getting her sign from the catcher. Hannah Carson behind the plate. She gets it, wind up, and the pitch. And that one's low, starting out with a ball. One ball, no strikes to count. She started out all three batters with a first pitch ball. Yeah, and it's kind of expected right there. As we had a little half hour break in between, and, you know, just trying to get loose now. Here comes her second offering, and that one's low and outside. Two balls and no strikes to count to Reagan Kerr. In that last game, about an hour or so, it ended about uh, 35 minutes ago. Michigan won 2 nothing. The bats on Maryland were pretty quiet. Reagan Kerr went 0 for 3 uh, in that game. And here she is at the plate looking at three straight balls from Megan Bobian. Three balls and no strikes to count with one out. Runner on second. Yeah, Kerr is batting. 263 this season, 
She's got five hits and one RBI so far. Here comes the pitch and a ground ball. Green light on 3-0 to the second baseman. She's there and to the first baseman, Lou Allen, and she is out. What a play by Michigan. Ranging to her right was Julia Jimenez, able to make the throw. And Lou Allen, outstretched arms, gets the ball in the glove. Make that two outs now. Jada McFarland was able to go to third on the ground ball to the right side. So there are two outs now with a runner on third base. And up steps Tristan Schlotterbeck. Trinity, excuse me, Trinity Schlotterbeck as she looks at a first pitch strike. Interesting here, Schlotterbeck is actually Maryland's pitcher and hitting fourth in their order. Pitch from Bobian. In the zone for a called strike. No balls, two strikes to count with two outs. Trinity Schlotterbeck at the plate. Schlotterbeck only hitting 071, .071 on the season. Not often you see a four batter go one of their first 14. But here she is. And she looks at the first ball of the at-bat. One ball and two strikes with two outs. Yeah, not very often, but, you know, head coach uh, Mark Montgomery, you know, just trying to switch it up, put some spice into this lineup. Bobian deals off speed. Trying to get it in there on the outside part of the plate, but it's just outside and a little low. Even without the count at two balls and two strikes. Again, there are two outs with Trinity Schlotterbeck at the plate. Megan Bobian deals, and that's a fly ball into right field. Looks like it's going foul, and it is off the wall near the bullpen. Foul ball into the bullpen. First souvenir of the day. <laughs> that is right, and the count remains. Two balls and two strikes. As the sun starts popping back out through the clouds here in Ann Arbor, kind of a cooling down here as we were in between the games. Yeah, it's a little bit chilly. Sun is out, mid-50s. Not much wind. Flags are stagnant. Yeah, first game we had a small wind. Bobian dribbler to the shortstop. Shortstop to first Lou Allen and able to get her. Natalia Rodriguez making that play range into her left and throws a strike to Lou Allen. And that will do it for the top half of the first inning. No runs on one hit and no errors. And Michigan will go up to the bat in the bottom half of the first inning with the score tied 0-0. Zero to zero. Yeah, the Wolverines are... Defense stayed strong there on that on that inning right there. You know, Maryland came out right away, a little bit more aggressive, getting a runner on first and then stealing second. So better start for Maryland. Now they just got to get it done on the de defensive side of the ball. And it was actually Jada McFarland working a walk in that first play appearance and not getting hit. So no hits on the board for Maryland in that half inning. But still one runner left on base in scoring position on third base, which is something that... Maryland really struggled with in that first game. Uh, runners in scoring position, runners on base. They were just not good at all. And that's really the difference maker. With runners on base, they were 0 for 6. Uh, six, appearance, six plate appearances with runners on base and not able to make a dent against Alex Storocco. And Only one of those plate appearances with, was with runners in scoring position. And they were hitless in that attempt. Whereas Michigan, while they didn't get uh, many attempts in addition to uh, Maryland, they really, they really paid, they, they were able to make it work, I should say. In that second inning, a double, a double, a single, two runs scored, and that was the difference. Yep, that was the difference. I was really both bats went quiet for the rest of that game, and Michigan had solid performance out on the mound. And that usually that, that's what happens is when you have solid pitching, you can deal with those slim leads. Exactly. And Michigan was really able to manufacture runs with a few sacrifice opportunities for Haley Hoganrod, which she took advantage of, uh, moving Lauren Esman over into scoring position and over to third base one time. And really great all-around softball by this Michigan squad as Lexi Blair, Step to the plate for Michigan. Lexi Blair hitting 449 on the year. First pitch coming. She bunts on the right side. Picked up by Schlotterbeck and throws out Lexi Blair with half a foot 
in between the throw hitting the glove and Lexi Blair's foot hitting the base. Lexi Blair's retired. One pitch, one out for Schlotterbeck. Yeah, very similar to how Michigan was playing that last game was their first runner up. They would like to get a bunt, you know, try to get a runner on the base. Natalia Rodriguez stepping up to the plate now. A lot of speed at the top half of this order for Michigan. Natalia Rodriguez looks at that ball and it is one ball and no strike to count. Lexi Blair, six for six on the year in stolen base attempts. And so she was trying to get on base there and potentially get in scoring position, but barely out on that attempt. And now Natalia Rodriguez trying to do the same. And she looks at a called strike on the outside part of the plate. One ball and one strike. Yeah, Natalia would like to switch it up in this game. She went 0 for 2 in the first one. So trying to get a hit on here. She's, like you mentioned, batting 274 so far. Pitch coming from Schlotterbeck is a ball, low and outside. Off-speed pitch, trying to sneak that one in. Two balls and one strike to count with one out. Schlotterbeck, more of a contact pitcher, just as the last pitcher for Maryland was as she throws a ball there, make that three balls and one strike to count. In 61 innings pitch, she only has 26 strikeouts, so... Michigan batters are expected to make contact here and that uh, first at bat is a bunt still contact but not swinging contact there's contact pop up to the left side third baseman's got it for Maryland and it is Michaela Jones taking care of that one watching that ball go into her glove for the second out of the inning Lou Allen at the plate for Michigan, hitting 303 on the year. One of the biggest power hitters in this order with four home runs on the year. She looks at the first pitch for a called strike. No balls and one strike with two outs. Yeah, Lou Allen doing a great job when runners are on the base, getting in 17 RBIs this season. Second pitch coming, and that's a called that's a ball on the outside and low. So one ball and one strike with two outs. Lou Allen ready for it. Here it comes. Off speed pitch. Dribbler to the left side and that is foul. Count now is one ball and two strikes. Lou Allen, as you said, was 0 for 3 in that first game. Made contact, no strikeouts in that first game from her. Made contact, but nothing doing on that stat sheet for her in that first one. And Schlotterbeck had some miscommunications with her catcher, not able to get a pitch that she wants. And so the catcher goes up and meets with her. Yeah, Marilyn just trying to make sure everybody's really on the same page you know this is the third time they've seen these Wolverines and second time of the day today and you know that if that if that second inning Michigan wasn't able to get two runs on the board we might be playing extra innings in the first one that's right and that's a ball after the meeting count is now two balls and two strikes with two outs Lou Allen again at the plate she went hitless 0 for 3 in that first game trying to make a little change a little difference in this one here as the pitch is coming, dribbler up the middle. It's going to be a tough play for the shortstop. Gets it and fires to first base, and that's an out. One, two, three inning for Schlotterbeck in Maryland. All contact, all out. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base as we head to the top half of the second inning. Score remains tied 0-0. Zero to zero. As you said, besides that second inning, the game was tied, and there were two runs in that second inning. Michigan won that game two to zero in the first one, uh, in the first game of this four-game series. Michigan won four to two, so both games have been really tight, as Michigan has won both games by only two runs. 
Yeah, the, the difference is, you know, Michigan's pitching and obviously the bats coming alive for Michigan. You know, he had a couple of players in that first game get up to the warning track, but, you know, Maryland's defense held strong. And Maryland now is going to have their five, six, and seven batters up at the plate. Megan McCommy, Ruby Butler, and Taylor Liguri. Again, Maryland went 0 for 3 on that first inning, but was able to work a walk. The first hitter, Jada McFarland, got on base and then stole second. But nothing doing in that first inning for Maryland. And the score is 0-0. Megan Bobian going to try to work on her control a little bit more in this inning. In that first batter, she walked McFarland and then a couple of three-ball counts uh, to other batters and trying to work and had to work from behind. And thankfully for Michigan, was able to limit the damage. Bobian fires. And that is going to be a ball low and outside to Megan McCommy. Yeah, McCommy bat batting 286 this season with four hits and one RBI, it looks like. So, McCommy ready for it. Here comes Bobian. Right back to Bobian. She fires to first. And that's an easy play, even after she bobbled it a little bit. Had a lot of time to get Mikami out at first base and does so easily. There is one out in this inning now with the sixth batter, uh, Butler, up at the plate. Yeah, Megan Bobian really just remaining calm and in the pitcher's mound out there, you know, controlling this game so far. Ruby Butler hitting 211 on the year. So, bottom half of this Maryland order, not as strong as the top half, but still respectable. Here comes a called strike on the outside part of the plate from Bobby, and looks like she's gotten those control issues under, uh, um, under control. Bobby gets a sign, comes set at the belt. Here's the windup and the pitch. Looks like it's fouled off on a check swing by Butler. That's going to drive the count to 0 and 2. No balls, two strikes with one out. Bobian shaking off a couple signals. Gets the one she wants. Comes set. And here's the 0-2 offering. And that is on the outside, but a ball. Bobian wanted that one, but didn't get the call. One ball and two strikes with one out. Bobian fires, and that's a foul ball right back into the netting by Butler. Count will remain one ball and two strikes. Mentioned Bobian with a stellar ERA this year, 1.43 coming into this one. In 75 innings pitch, she also has 117 strikeouts. So that one-two punch of Starocco and Bobian really limits the damage offensively of other teams when it comes to runs and also sets them down with strikeouts with ease. That's an off-speed pitch trying to get Butler to swing at and fish, but she holds off. Count is now two balls and two strikes. Got to be really tough to, to face that two-headed monster back-to-back. -back. Yes, especially, like you said, in a doubleheader, if you face Starocco, you think you're going to get an easier matchup because, I mean, she has a .47 ERA, but now you have to face Bobian, who has a 1.43 ERA, so not much easier. <laughs> Doesn't get easier at all. And ball three from Megan Bobian. But Ruby Butler staying alive in, the, in this count right here. Making her work. Megan Bobian has 21 pitches already. But pitch count is not really an issue for her. In the last appearance by Bobian, she threw 117 pitches. Which is her season high. And that was actually yesterday. So we'll see if that affects her at all. Due to the fact that she threw a lot of pitches only yesterday. Her season high. 
But here she is ready to work. And here comes a 3-2 offering, and it is fouled back by Butler. We will do it again, folks. Yeah, Ruby, Ruby is really making her work out there right now. Ruby Butler in the box, waiting for Bobby, and Bobby comes set. She fires. Another foul ball. <laughs> wow. Ruby Butler really making Megan Bobby and work. Yeah, adding up adding up that pitch count in the second inning right now. Only one out, too, so far. This is going to be the eighth pitch of the at-bat coming to Ruby Butler from Megan Bobby. Bobian fires. That's an off-speed pitch, but high and away. Ball four, taking first base is Ruby Butler. With one out in this inning, Maryland now has a runner on first base. Yeah, you know, they've shown that they are able to get runners on the base, but now they've got to be able to bring them home. You know, they've, they've left too many runners out there. As you say, they left runners out there with runners on base and in scoring position. Thus far, only in this game through one inning, Maryland is 0 for 3 on the day. And Taylor Liguori up to the plate. Megan Bobian on the mound, stepping off the rubber, and she's back on now. Gets a sign. She comes set, and she fires. That is going to be low for ball one, bouncing in the dirt. Looked like Butler on first base took a good secondary lead and looked like she may may have tried to go to second base but didn't get a great jump on it. Didn't get a good read on the ball in the dirt also, so she held off. And that's going to be a strike on that second offering from Bobian. Count is all tied up at 1-1. Third pitch from Bobian is a ball up in the zone. Two balls and one strike. Above the zone, I should say. Two balls and one strike with one out. Runner on first base. Liguri gets the pitch. That's a called strike on the inside part of the plate. Liguri not taking the bat off her shoulders. Looking at that one. Count is all tied up. Two balls and two strikes from Bobian. Yeah, just waiting for Bobian to throw that right pitch for her. But, you know, I think they, she'll go back to the changeup right here with this pitch. Bobian comes set. She fires. Off speed. Off the glove of Lou Allen into right field. Taking third base is Butler. And she's in there. Runners on first and third for Maryland as Liguori came through with a slap shot to right field. I don't know what Mark Montgomery told these this team at in between the games, but you know Maryland is coming out with a fire in their belly. You know a lot of momentum out there right now. They're really, really being aggressive in this plate discipline that they have is outstanding. We're working two walks against Megan Bobian early on, no strikeouts. There's going to be a team meeting for Michigan at the mound. Yeah, Coach Carol Hutchins not taking any anything for granted right now. You know just. Have a meeting at the mound, get everybody on the same page, you know, because right now only one out, top of the second inning, runners on first and third, probably looking at a sacrifice bunt right now. And on first base is Liguri. Liguri not known for her wheels, but, oh, we do have a pinch runner. So that... As Liguori is not known for her wheels, she was taken out of the game for a pinch running situation for Maryland. And I'm going to guess that they are going to try to take second base and potentially manufacture a run here. Yeah, and now you're definitely looking at like definitely a, a uh, sacrifice bunt. Coming up to the play is the eight hitter Vulgaris. Gracie Vulgaris hitting 282 on the year. And not a small sample size. She's played a good amount of games. So she's a pretty good hitter in her own right. 
Runners on first and third. Maryland past two games are hitless with runners in scoring position. Let's see if they can make a dent there. And she turns and fires to second. And they got a run down again. Maryland trying to manufacture a run. Run scores. They got a double steal going. And the catcher for Michigan, Carson, threw to second base as the pinch runner was stealing second. And from third base, Butler went home. Michigan got the out over trying to get the over trying to stop the run from scoring. Now there are two outs. Maryland leads one to nothing. No balls and one strike the count. Yeah, there it is. The aggression of Maryland works out in their favor as they strike first in this game. Bobian fires towards the plate. That's a fly ball into left field. May drop. And coming on, but that is barely foul. Coming on was Kirsten. Almost made the play, but she was a step or two late. Yeah, just a few inches away from that ball being in, in fair territory. Yes, and now that will bring the count to no balls and two strikes. With two outs, Bobian trying to limit the damage in this inning. Nobody on base anymore. Michigan trusting their offense, willing to give up that run to ensure the fact that they got that out. No balls, two strikes, two outs. Bobian set. She fires. And that's high. Yeah, that's Bobian's 36th pitch so far, the second, th through only two innings. And we're not even done with the second inning yet. Mm -hmm. So hopefully for Michigan, Bobian's pitch count does not climb any farther, but who knows what it'll do. And that's a ball. So that's 37 now for Bobian. Yeah, it's tough with a pitch count, but when you have players that step into that box and, you know, they get like six, seven pitches thrown at them, that pitch count adds up quick. Two balls and two strikes to count. Grace Vulgaris at the plate. Gets the pitch from Bobian. Swing and a miss. Bobian's first strikeout of the day. As she limits the damage to only one run on one hit. And nobody left on base for Maryland. As we head to the bottom half of the second inning. With Maryland leading this one. One to zero. Yeah, it must have been nice to see that ball cross home plate. And just hit the back of the glove and get out of this inning. Ending up with 40 pitches thrown. Maryland still hitless with runners in scoring position. But that single by Ligori into right field, advancing Butler to third, was their first hit with a runner on base in the past two games. So breaking that schneid for Maryland. And with the falling batter with a bunt, fake bunt attempt, and then the... Uh, Action on the base paths resulting in a run for Maryland. They were able to manufacture that run, as I predicted, yep. and as Amir said. And yeah, I'm not really sure that they really wanted it to plan like that, but, you know, it works out for them. So Maryland heading into the bottom half of the second inning, up one nothing. Michigan went hitless in that first inning. A 1-2-3 inning for Schlotterbeck. They'll have Jimenez, Carson, and Esman up at the plate to start this order for Michigan. Yeah, the, the four through six part of this lineup was really where the damage was done in the last game with Esman coming in there. Yes, and Julia Jimenez... Up the plate, hitting 286 on the year. Trying to make something happen early here. Schlotterbeck gets a sign, throws. Ground ball to the left side. Shortstop's got it. Throws to first base, and she's out. Pretty easy play for Ruby Butler. Throwing over to Reagan Kerr for Maryland, and that retires the first batter of the inning for Michigan. Yeah, Maryland really locked in so far. Much better play compared to the first game, but this is that same spot in that in the first game where Michigan was able to open up this game. So let's see if they Maryland can rewrite the script. Hannah Carson stepping to the plate for Michigan, and a big difference between these two teams right now is the pitch count. Schlotterbeck with 12 pitches through an inning and a third, and Bobian up near in the 30 range. So Michigan way more aggressive early on in the count and it may have come back to haunt them early on here. But in the rest of this game, the aggression may end up working in their favor. So it all balances out as the first pitch was fouled back by Hannah Carson. 
Here comes the second pitch from Slaughterbeck. That's going to be a ball low and outside. One ball, one strike the count with one out at the plate. Hannah Carson waiting for the pitch. Here it comes, swinging and fouling it back against the netting. One ball and two strikes now. Yeah, Schlatterbeck so far in 12 appearances this season has an ERA of 4.28. So compare that to Megan Bobian of 143. You know, you give the pitching nod right now to Michigan, but... Right now, Maryland leads 1-0. to zero. Here comes the pitch. Ground ball to the left side. Third baseman to the first baseman, and that's an out. Maryland, good play by Michaela Jones, ranging in from third base and throwing it over to Reagan Kerr. Two up, two down so far in the second inning. Schlaughterbeck handling this Michigan lineup with ease. But here comes the hottest batter in this Michigan lineup this series, Lauren Essman. Five for six in this series so far with two doubles, two singles, and a home run. Here she is. Gets the first pitch swinging. Ground ball. And that's going to be a third base to first base. And that's going to do it for Michigan in the bottom half of the second inning. One, two, three. Three ground balls. And a lot of action for Michaela Jones and for Reagan Kerr. Third baseman and first baseman. Yeah, Maryland right now passing the, their first real test. So now it will be interesting to see how Michigan, how long the staff lets Megan Bobian stay out on the mound. Like She's at 40 pitches right now. She's throwing 20 strikes, 20 balls. So if this inning gets out of hand, it could be an early day for her. And we saw earlier in the season she did a back-to-back -back, uh, against Indiana on March 26th and March 27th. And she threw 109 pitches and 107 pitches. So it doesn't seem as though the back to back day, pitching on back to back days, will be an issue in regards to pitch count for Megan Bobian. Again, yesterday she threw 117 pitches in that night game against Maryland in that win. So it appears that pitch count won't be too much of an issue for Bobian in this one, but it is important to keep an eye out on that. Yeah, the first two innings. They, uh, Maryland's been able to get runners onto the base and in scoring position, and then that second inning they were able to get a run in, and <laughs> kind of sounds like similar to the first game, except the roles are reversed. Because in that second inning, Michigan was able to get some runs on the board, but in this game right now, Maryland strikes first. JoJo McCray up in the batter's box for Maryland. Bobian fires her first offering, and that's going to be a called strike. McCray, the nine hitter for Maryland in this order right now, and it's going to be nine, one, and two. McCray, McFarland, and Okada for Maryland in this third inning. Bobian, 0 1 count, pitches again, and that's going to be another called strike as McCray saw that one go by. No balls and two strikes to count. Nobody out. McCray in this batter's box, waiting for the pitch from Bobian. Bobian gets the sign at the belt. Here's the windup and the pitch. And that bounces a foot or two in front of the plate for ball number one. Yeah, it seems like Bobian really hasn't found her kind of rhythm yet right now. And so you have a teammate out there on the mound just trying to get her to relax, you know. She's a veteran. She knows what she's doing. McCray went 0 for 1 in the previous game of this doubleheader with a strikeout against Storaco. Here's Bobian with the pitch. Slap to the left side, but foul off the bat of JoJo McCray. And we will do it again with a count of one ball and two strikes. Here's Bobian with the pitch. Here she comes. 
off speed is in there and fooled Jojo McCray. Jojo McCray thought that one was high and outside, but it just dropped back in for a called third strike. That's the second strike out of the day. First of the inning for Megan Bobian. One up, one down. And here comes the top of the Maryland lineup with Jada McFarland, who in her first plate appearance walked and then stole second and went to third. Yeah, the freshman definitely producing for these Terps this season, batting 329 and bringing in 12 RBIs. Definitely the leader on this team so far. No doubt about it. She looks at that first pitch, and it was a called strike. Zero balls and one strike to count. Megan Bobby in the head. Here she comes. Off-speed pitch. Fly it into the second baseman, and that is going to be an out as Julia Jimenez is there. That one looked like it had a little more distance off the bat, but it was just a weak pop-up to right to Julia Jimenez. Yeah, we've been fooled a couple of times when that ball ricochets off the bat, you know, just cracks off the bat and you think it's going far and <laughs> just pops it up. Two up, two down this inning so far for Bobian. Sight that many Michigan fans and Michigan staff are happy to see. Bobian with the windup. Here's the pitch. That one's outside the zone for a ball. One ball, no strikes, and two outs. There's a meeting at the mound now, second of the game, second straight inning. Bobian hasn't had much is many issues this inning thus far. Had yep. to work out of trouble in the second inning. Allowed one run, but limited the damage. And in this one, she's retired the first two batters on a strikeout. And a pop-up, and now she's behind the count, one ball and no strikes. Yeah, this third inning, she, she's been able to, to settle in. You know, the first batter, taking care of no problem, and the second one, strikeout. So trying to get this third one here and send us to the bottom of the third. And again, it is Taylor Okada at the plate. Okada, one of two Maryland batters hitting over 320. She's ready for it. Bobian fires towards the plate, and that one's hidden to center left field. And Natalia Rodriguez is there, ranging into uh, shallow left field as the shortstop. And that'll do it for Maryland in the top half of the third inning. Three up, three down, no runs, no hits, no errors, no runners left on base. As we head to the bottom half of the third inning, Maryland leading 1-0. In this inning, Michigan will have 7, 8, and 9 up at the plate. Hoganrod, Bump, and Kirsten looking for Michigan's first hit of the day. And it's not like Maryland has done much more damage uh, when it comes to hits as they only have one. They're one for nine on the day. But they were able to manufacture that run in the second on the base pads, and that's been the difference thus far in the first two and a half innings of this game. Yeah, and if you're Maryland right now, you're pretty pleased with how how well your team has performed so far. I mean, as you mentioned, the bats haven't been going crazy. They got lucky by having a runner in scoring position with only one out, and then you have the base runner go for second. Pitcher throws it to second, and then the base runner on third is able to come in home, and then you have the pickle situation and the sacrifice out. Stepping to the plate now for Michigan in this bottom half of the third inning is Haley Hoganrod. Hoganrod was up at the plate three times in that first game, but does not have a statistical plate appearance as she had two sacrifices. Sacrifice bunts moving Lauren Essman over into scoring position and over to third base and worked a walk. So a thousand on base percentage for her in that first one. Looking to mirror that here in the second game she gets the first pitch from Slaughterbeck that's going to be a ball bounced off the glove of the catcher and then into the umpire they're going to give the umpire a second to breathe as the catcher uh, for Maryland Gracie Vulgaris goes to the mound and meets with Slaughterbeck umpire is all good and play ball we will play exactly <laughs> One ball, no strikes, and nobody out for Haley Hoganrod at the plate. 
the wind has really died down. There is no wind now out on the field. Hogan Rod gets the pitch. And that's going to be a strike on the outside part of the plate, evening up the count at one ball and one strike. Schlotterbeck has faced six batters, six up, six down thus far. Hogan Rod, the seventh. Here she comes with the pitch. That's a little dribbler foul to the left side. One ball and two strikes. And as I mentioned, Schlotterbeck, a contact pitcher, has induced contact for all of the batters faced. No strikeouts thus far and hasn't allowed a base runner. Yeah, hasn't allowed a base runner right now. No hits, no runs, no errors. You know, Michigan really struggling to get those bats going. Here comes the pitch, and that's high and outside. Two balls and two strikes to count. Hoganrod with a good eye. With that good plate discipline. Making Schlotterbeck work a little bit. Schlotterbeck only had 17 pitches through two innings coming into this one. Hoganrod with a third of the pitches. Oh my gosh, fly ball into left field. Is that gone? Oh, oh. just foul. Cuff a few feet. <laughs> to the left of the foul pole, that one jumped off the bat. Yeah, that one had the distance, but, you know, just just left of the foul pole. And literally, we just mentioned it, you know, the Michigan bats have gone cold. And right there goes the distance almost. Hoganrod with pop. She has a home run on the season. Almost had another one there, but just a little, a little too far ahead of that one. Schlotterbeck gets a sign in motion. Here we go. And dribbler up the middle. Shortstop to first. And she got her. Great play by the shortstop Ruby Butler for Maryland. Nice throw. And one up and one down thus far in this inning. Taylor bump up to the plate for Michigan. Yeah, kind of a slow ball there into the into the uh, gap. And shortstop's able to make the play. And one up, one down. Butler with a nice throw from Maryland. Could have been an issue because of how slow that ground ball was, but the transfer and then the throw to Kerr was seamless. The throw, uh, the pitch from Schlotterbeck is a called strike on the outside part of the plate. Bump looked at the first pitch, and now is no balls and one strike to count. Bump has had a really good series thus far. She went one for two in the game just now, and last night she had a home run. Yeah, she did. She hit a moonshot last night. It is one ball, one strike. The count. She just looked at a ball up and away. She and Lauren Essman have really been the difference maker in the two games thus far in this series. Lauren Essman has gotten on base, and Bump has driven her in. That's been the script, and Michigan has stuck to it. But in this one, they're going to have to deviate from that a little bit as Essman... Got out at the end of last inning, and Bump is up with the bases empty. She looked at the ball two, so two balls and one strike with one out. Here's the pitch from Schlotterbeck. Drilled to the left side, but foul off the netting. So these bats are slowly starting to wake up, you know, swinging at these pitches. Two balls and two strikes after that rip off the bat. Of bump into the netting. Trying to straighten that one out. Just like Hoganrod tried to straighten it out. After she drilled it to the left side of the foul pole. Just beyond the fence. But she went out and bump is trying to not do the same. as That one's in the right field. That's high. It's far. It is gone. Second home run of the series for Taylor Bump. And she evens up the score at one run apiece. Maryland won. Michigan won. Taylor Bump rounding third base, and she's going home, folks. You know, you could feel it coming right there. You know, she had a home run last night, and the bats have gone quiet today, and Taylor Bump steps up to the plate and slams one home. Boy, did she straighten that one out. After the rip down the third base line, she straightened that one out to right center, and that was a no-doubter to the middle of the right field bleachers. And right away, here comes Coach Montgomery out to the mound. Michigan's first hit of the day. Or of the game, I should say, since we already had a game today. <laughs> First hit of the game is a home run off the bat of Taylor Bump. And Taylor Bump holding up her end of the bargain. 
early in this one. And I mentioned early in her at bat that she and Lauren Essman have really been a great combo. One, two punch for Michigan in this series. Really been the difference makers. And early on in this one, you're seeing why Taylor Bump deposited that one into the right center bleachers. Yeah, the seniors stepping up huge for Michigan exactly when they needed it as well, you know, to give that little energy into this lineup right now. See our Kirsten at the plate for Michigan. She looks at college strike on the inside part of the plate. No balls in one strike with one out. Pitch number two is in there for a called strike again. Pretty much the same location. No balls and two strikes account. And Sierra Kirsten trying not to be the first strikeout victim of Schlotterbeck on the day. Schlotterbeck gets a sign at the belt and she fires. And there it is. Strike three swinging from Sierra Kirsten. And that will be the second out of this inning. And Michigan turning the batting order around and Lexi Blair stepping up to the plate. The leadoff hitter, Junior, hitting 449 heading into this one. That's pretty up impressive. To the plate. Very impressive. And just the, just the batter you want up with uh, two outs trying to rejuvenate this team and get a rally going perhaps. She looks at the first pitch and that's a ball up and away. One ball and no strikes. And as we mentioned early in this game, Lexi Blair has great wheels. If she gets on base, she is uh, six for six on the base pads and stolen base attempts. So she could easily get into scoring position if she works a walk or singles or manufactures some way to get on first base. She fouled off pitch there. And that is one ball and one strike. Lexi Blair waiting for the pitch. Here it comes from Schlotterbeck. That's going to be inside and high. Two balls and one strike. Lexi Blair in a comfortable position now as Schlotterbeck has to come into her. Schlotterbeck. Gets ready. Here she comes. And that's a shot into right center. Center field. And that's oh. off the base of the wall. Blair is going to second. She's in safely. Man, stand up double for Lexi Blair. And the rally continues for Michigan. Yeah, the rally continues for Michigan. You know, with uh, the home run earlier on, you know, the bats are coming back to life. And now, as you mentioned, she is on the bases, which is dangerous because she definitely has those wheels. But with two outs, how aggressive do you want your team to be right now? I think they don't take the bat out of Natalia Rodriguez's hands. 274 hitter, uh, 348 on base percentage. Solid player up at the plate. And single scores Lexi Blair. So I don't foresee Lexi Blair taking any chances on the base pads. But here we go. And she squares around to bunt but pulls it back. First pitch is a ball. One ball and no strikes. She's definitely taking a big lead out there though. She is. That good secondary lead. If, if She's going to be going on contact with two outs. So if Rodriguez makes contact and the ball drops, then Lexi Blair is putting herself in a great position to score. Yeah, and I mean, when there's no baseman next to you, you can be a little bit more aggressive. Here's Schlotterbeck with the second pitch of the at-bat. Ground ball to left side to the left side of third base, and that one's foul. No sign from the third base umpire, but it's pretty obvious that, that one was to the left of third base. And count is now evened up at one ball and one strike. Yeah, that ball went right in between the umpire and the third base coach. Antonio Rodriguez was on that one just a little early. Again, if she can straighten up, Michigan scores. And that third pitch from Schlotterbeck is a ball low and outside. Two balls and one strike. Again, two outs, so on the... On contact, Lexi Blair will be on the move from second base. Schlotterbeck gets the pitch. Fires. 
And that's going to be a called strike on the outside part of the plate, evening up the count at two balls and two strikes with two outs. A lot of twos. Runner on second base. Two, two, two. Two hits for Michigan descending. <laughs> Schlotterbeck comes set at the belt. Here's the windup and the pitch. Drilled into center field. Now one. Oh, oh. diving catch by McFarland, saving an, uh, a run. And man, what a play by McFarland. Huge play. You cannot overestimate how big of a play that was there by McFarland. Making that diving catch. Really saving Michigan from getting that run and potentially getting into the third. Wow, if she missed that one, that one was going to the wall and Rodriguez was going into third. Rodriguez would have, or yeah, Rodriguez, yeah, she would have got to third. Blair would have, or uh, yeah, Blair would have got in. So, what a play! <laughs> game, not game saving, yeah, but just a huge, huge play there by McFarland. Yeah, it could have been game saving. Last game, Michigan <laughs> only won two nothing, so very easily could have saved the game right there in this early pitchers duel. So at the end of three, Michigan with one run on two hits, no errors, one runner left on base as we head to the top of the fourth inning with the score all knotted up at one apiece. Good game so far. Great game. Michigan's bats got rolling there. Uh, the, the home run off the bat of Taylor Bump got it started. Michigan was 0 of 7 before that, and then got another hit off the bat of Lexi Blair to center field, and so very close to getting another one off the bat of Natalia Rodriguez, but center fielder for Maryland, Jada McFarland, was there with the diving catch. And she said, one run is enough, Michigan. Yeah, if Maryland does end up winning this game, we will look back at that play by McFarland. Bobian out for her fourth inning. In three innings pitch, she's allowed one hit with one run and two walks to, with two strikeouts. A little uncharacteristic with the two walks, but she has since settled down after that first inning. And here's the first pitch of the inning, and that's going to be a called strike. She has found the zone, folks. Yes, really settling in after the getting knocked around in that second inning. You know, the pitch count has also settled down, you know. You got to give it to her, though. She's a seasoned veteran. The senior knows how to control the game. Second pitch is a ball. One ball, one strike to count. Reagan Kerr at the plate for Maryland. And as I mentioned before, Kerr went 0 for 3 in that first game. She's 0 for 1 today with a ground out to the second baseman, Julia Jimenez. Here's Bobian with the pitch. And that one bounced about five or six feet before home plate. So a pretty easy take for Reagan Kerr. Two balls and one strike. Bobian behind in the count. Something she's been accustomed to today. Not a, not a common situation for her this season or last. Now she's behind in the count. Three balls and one strike. I yeah, could see Kirby a little bit more aggressive right here and swing at this one, but you know I think Bobian's going to come back with a kind of off-speed pitch. Three balls, one strike to count. Bobian's got to come into her. Here she comes, and that's going to be a looping single over the third baseman bump, and that's going to be a single for Kerr. She gets her first hit of the day. Reagan Kerr standing on first base now with nobody out. Yep, as expected. Kerr makes enough contact in there, gets one to drop in the left field, and they have a runner out on the field, you know. Zero outs, too. And Kerr is a base stealer. Seven stolen bases in nine attempts, the most attempts on Maryland, so I expect her to be going on the pitch. But it's all about Bobian and the scouting report that Maryland has. Ground ball to the left side. Rodriguez to second. Throw to first. Not in time. But they got the runner at second base as Kerr was not fast enough. And Rodriguez made a great play. Throw to first was not in time. And it was also wild. But uh, batter Trinity Schlotten Schlottenberg. 
Slottenbeck, excuse me, Schlotterbeck, was not able to reach second base. So she remained at first base, not trusting her wheels. She's still at first base with Megan Mikami up at the plate. One out, runner on first. Bobian with the pitch. Bunt attempt by Mikami is uh, pulled back. She looks at the ball for the first pitch. One ball and no strikes with the runner on first. Again, Schlotterbeck is on first base. She's actually the pitcher for Maryland. Second pitch, ground ball to the left side. Rodriguez to second, and they're not, any, they're not even going to try. They're not even going to try to get Mikami at first base, but they will take the out at second. That is two straight ground balls to Rodriguez at shortstop. Two straight throws from her to the second baseman, Jimenez, to get two outs. So Ruby Butler now stands at the plate facing off against Megan Bobian with two outs in the inning and a runner on first base. Bobian delivers. Now it's going to be a ball up and away. One ball, no strikes, two outs. Ruby Butler at the plate. She was 0 for 2 with a runner left on base in that first one. And here she is with a swinging bunt, but pulls it back. And that pitch was a ball. So good decision by Butler. Two balls and no strikes with two outs. Yep. And the score, Mi Maryland 1, Michigan 1. Top of the fourth inning. Two balls, no strikes, two outs. Runner on first base is Mikami. And that's a foul ball to the right side. Count is now two balls and one strike. Ruby Butler, she, she was the one that was <laughs> making trouble in the first inning, staying alive at the, uh, at the base. Yeah, she worked that walk after about nine or ten pitch at bat. Very impressive at bat from Butler. And she's ahead in the count now. She was ahead 2-0, now she's ahead 2-1 after that foul ball. Bobian comes set. Now the pitch. Runners going. Throw down to second. In, oh, it was in time, but not able to handle it was Jimenez. And taking second base is Mikami. Mikami didn't have too many stolen bases before that when she was 2 for 3 on the year. Make that 3 for 4 now. Yeah, the, the pitch was in time, just kind of fumbled it right there. But, you know, since the first pitch of the second game, Maryland has been aggressive from the get-go. Completely. Really, on the base pass is where they're manufacturing their runs, and they know against Megan Bobian that they're not going to get many opportunities to score. And so when they get a runner on base, they're really just trying to take advantage of it any way they can. And 2-2 two -two count, here's the offering. He wanted to sneak that off speed pitch in there. Michigan does not like the call of ball, but umpire's got final say. So three balls, two strikes, two outs. Full count. It, sound, <laughs> it sounds like we said this before when Ruby Butler was up last time. Let's see how many pitches it takes this time. <laughs> Man, Ruby Butler is a tough out for Megan Bobian. And she's making her work once again. Calls for time. Steps out of the batter's box. Little twist, twist, stretch. Man, as this game is tied one-to-one, -one, bottom of the fourth, you know, this could be kind of a momentum shifter. Either if Maryland's able to get another base runner or Michigan gets a strikeout. And Bobian fires, and that one is a foul ball to the left side of home plate. So that's one. <laughs> that is one foul ball, and that is the sixth pitch of the at-bat. So here comes number seven. Number seven for number seven. She has seen a lot of pitches from Bobby in, in this one. Worked a walk again in her first plate appearance, and she's up now with a 3-2 count. She calls for time, and the catcher Hannah Carson meeting with Megan Bobian at the mound. Yeah, both teams can definitely feel that this is a pivotal moment in this game. Is Maryland, is Ruby Butler able to get to first and get 
that continue this inning or is Michigan able to get out of this inning and keep it at one to one we're about to find out we shall see Mikami has some wheels on second base and she stole that base when she was on first after she reached on a fielder's choice and that's a pop-up but out of the reach of Hannah Carson out of play we will do it again three <laughs> balls and two strikes eighth pitch of the at-bat incoming yeah, Ruby Butler is staying alive at the plate. We've said that a couple times today. Oh, completely. She she is, a, as I said, a very tough out for Megan Bobian. Bobian thought that she had that strike three call on that changeup early in, earlier in that bat, but the umpire may have been fooled, and she didn't get the call, and he was there not fooled is. there, folks. And that is strike three. Megan Bobian happy to get out of that jam. As Maryland leaves one runner on, no runs, no hits, and one runner left on base. Just a huge piss right there to get to get that strikeout for Michigan. And as they look now to build on that momentum that they were able to build in the third inning, and to break up the break this game wide open. Michigan is going to have three, four, and five up in this inning, the bottom half of the fourth inning. Lou Allen, Julie Jimenez, and Hannah Carson trying to do some real damage. For Michigan, this game and last, the run production has really come at the bottom half of the lineup. So if the top half of the lineup in 3-4-5 can get on base for the bottom half, then that'll be really key in producing some more runs and making some distance but between the, the Terps and the Wolverines as the score right now as we speak is knotted up one apiece. Yeah, and this inning, as we mentioned before, with that last out, it's going to be crucial for either team. And as we look to see, can Michigan build up on that momentum that they created in the third inning? Or is Maryland's defense, are they able to hold strong like they did in the prior two innings? Both teams with two hits on the day. Difference being Maryland has two walks, so they were able to manufacture some run a run with some players on base, whereas Michigan just had to rely on the long ball off the bat of Taylor Bump, and that's how they got their run. We are now in the bottom half of the fourth inning. 3-4-5 up in this Michigan order. Lou Allen stepping up to the plate, and Schlotterbeck towing the rubber for Maryland. She gets the sign, comes set. Here she comes. That's going to be a ball. High and outside. One ball and uh, no strikes for Lou Allen. Allen ready for it. Here comes Slaughterbeck starting the windup and the pitch. Allen held back on swinging at that one. It was a good decision. Two balls, no strikes, and nobody out. Slaughterbeck behind in the count. Two balls, no strikes. Got to come into Allen here. Here she comes. And she does not do so. Make the count three balls and no strikes. Lou Allen did not have the green light earlier in the previous game when she had a 3-0 count to her. And so I would presume that she will be holding off on swinging at this next offering from Schlotterbeck. There's a meeting between Schlotterbeck and Volgaris, the catcher. And Vulgaris trotting back to home plate. In her first plate appearance, Lou Allen grounded out to the shortstop, Butler. There were a few ground outs to Butler and to the third baseman, Jones, in that inning. As that's a called strike. Three balls and one strike now. Michigan's made Schlotterbeck work a little bit recently. After going through two innings pitched with only 19 pitches in that last inning, she had 21 pitches thrown. And that's a ground ball to the right side to second baseman. She's got it. Throws to first, and that's an out. Ligori to Kerr. Pretty well done by Maryland, looking at, making it look easy. Yeah, making it look easy. That, that's the term, you know. It's never easy to get that pitch when you're on your heels. 
And that's exactly what she was able to do. Liguri ranging to her left, going in the 3-4 gap, where a hard hit ball would have been a single, but not too hard hit off the bat of Allen. And Liguri able to control it and throw it to Kerr. That'll be the first out of the inning. Stepping up to the plate now is Julie Jimenez. Jimenez gets the first pitch, swinging. That's a rocket to left field. One bouncer to the left fielder, and she's in there for a single. Yeah, Julia Jimenez, the sophomore, getting on base, you know, one out so far, trying to get Michigan rolling again after that third inning. And Jimenez continuing uh, her hitting streak. She had a hit in that last game, in the first game of the doubleheader. She went one for three. And so now she is one for two. And on base here for the batter, Hannah Carson. Uh, Jimenez, not really a base stealer. One of one on the year. So I would not expect her to be going. Michigan could try to manufacture a run by having a sacrifice bunt, as they have done previously, but we shall see. They do not. Swing is Hannah Carson. Drive to center field, turning, spinning, and making the catch is McFarland. Retreating the first base is Jimenez. Yeah, that was a high-flying ball right there. For Hannah Carson on that one. Hannah Carson got a good amount of that one, but just not enough to get it out of the park. It was uh, a pretty pretty easy fly ball for McFarland to handle. Didn't have to move too much. Now 12 outs. This, this could be a tough out for Maryland as Lauren Esman steps up to the plate. Esman 0 for 1 with a ground out to the third baseman in the first. But here she goes, and that's a uh, line drive over the third baseman's head. And she's on base. Man, she has been a thorn in the side of Maryland this series thus far. Right on par, Esman steps up and gets, an, gets another, gets onto the bases right there. Maryland has, gets, has two outs, two base runners. Game's tied up at one. This is a fun inning. Really is. And... I mentioned earlier that the bottom half of this Michigan lineup has been the difference maker, and they just need the top half to pitch in a little bit so they can drive him in. And it was Carson getting on base, or excuse me, it was Jimenez getting on base, and Esman now getting on base too. So Michigan has a runner in scoring position on second base with runners on first and second as Hoganrod looks at the first pitch, which is a ball on the outside part of the plate. And... Michigan trying to extend or trying to get a lead for the first time in this one. All tied up one and one. Blooper to the shortstop. Grabbed and stepped on second base. Butler handled that one. Little looper off the bat, but she was able to hand it off, handle it off the bounce. Stepping on second ahead of Esmond's slide. And that's going to be a third out of the inning. Yeah, just a really safe play right there. You know, you, you have two outs on the board. All you got to do is get that runner on second, and then we go to the top of the fifth and still tied up at one. Exactly. Michigan bats have come alive since that bump home run in the third inning. They really uh, have. No runs, two hits, though, and no errors. Michigan did leave two on base yep, in the bottom runners. half of that fourth inning. So we head to the top half of the fifth. All tied up 1-1. One, one. After about an hour of game time so far, we are through four innings, so moving along nicely here. Yeah, moving along nicely. Got some clouds coming in now. It's been kind of overcast all day. Michigan's bench and the fans were uh, having some energy in that inning, but unable to translate that into an into an extra run or a run, I should say, as the score remains one to one. The Terps getting their run due to their ability on the base paths of manufacturing run. They had first and third, and did a stolen uh, a steal attempt from first and then as she went to second the throw was to second the runner on third scored and Michigan got the runner from first out so they traded an out for a run and Michigan got their run in the third inning on a home run off the bat of Taylor Bump here's Bobian dealing for Michigan and that first pitch in the top half of the fifth inning is going to be a called strike 
facing off against Taylor Liguri. Liguri, one for one on the day with a single, and she was the one that singled and moved over the runner to third base in that second inning. Second pitch from Bobian is a ball on the inside part of the plate. Evening up the count at one and one. Something going on with the umpire. They're motioning to the Michigan dugout. I don't know if that's a warning of some sort for arguing balls and strikes. But play has been paused, and we're about to resume. But he had to scribble something down in his notebook. And we are back. One ball, one strike the count. Taylor Liguri leading off for Maryland, so nobody out. Here comes Bobian's pitch. Off-speed pitch is low and outside. Two balls and one strike. Here comes Bobian, set and fires. Ground ball to left side, foul. Few feet to the left of third base. Jumping out of the way was the third base coach of Maryland, and count is all tied up at two balls and two strikes. Yeah, Taylor Gorey trying to get on base for the second time in this game today. Here comes the sixth pitch of the at-bat. From Bobian. Bobian fires. Off speed pitch. Oh, Ooh. line drive to the third baseman and grab by bump in the air. Not even having to move at all. She just snagged that one. That's the first out of the inning. Just basically fell right into her glove. Great position and great play. And that's the first out of the inning. Gracie Vulgaris up at the plate now for Maryland. The number eight hitter. Bulgaris 0 for 1 on the day with a strikeout. And she's fooled on that first pitch. Swinging through an off-speed pitch. Starting off the at-bat with no balls and one strike. Bobian getting her sign. Twirling the ball in the left hand. Comes set and fires. This off-speed pitch is going to be low and in the dirt. Count is all evened up at one ball, one strike, and one out. Score knotted up at one apiece. Bobian with the windup and the pitch. Fires. Fastball inside. Two balls and one strike. Gracie Vulgaris ahead in the count a little bit. Megan Bobian not too not too afraid of working from behind. She has done that good amount today and limited the damage to only one run in that second inning. Yeah, which is really impressive, actually, when you think about it. Bobian's pitch is another one. This one looked high and inside. Make that three balls in one strike. And with only one out, nobody on. Oh, Vulgaris. May, uh, Bobian may come into Vulgaris here, but again, nobody on. So a lot of room on the bases to put her. Here comes a 3-1 pitch from Bobian. And that's a called strike right in the middle of the plate. Keeping the bat on her shoulder was Vulgaris. Three balls and two strike with one out. Full count now. Bobian gets a sign. Nods. Comes set and fires. Off speed pitch is just outside. And that will be ball four as Vulgaris heads to first base. Last time Vulgaris got on, she had a pinch runner. So interesting to see what they're going to do here. Or excuse me, that was Liguri who got the pinch runner. So Vulgaris, first time she's on base now. Yeah, just looking at the pitch count right now, it's it's kind of slowly starting to even out. You know, Michigan now only has 71 pitches compared to Maryland's 50 pitches. So uh, Bobian has, has settled in since the first couple of innings. JoJo McCray at the plate, fouling this one off to the left side, slapping it foul. No balls, one strike the count. With one out and a runner on first base. Mm -hmm. 
Bobian shakes off the catcher, trying to get on the same page about what pitch they're doing. Gets it. Here comes the pitch. She goes. Runner's going. Throws a second is there. Oh, oh. dropped by Jimenez. Throw beat the runner, but Volgaris is in for the steal. Wow, Volgaris. Three for three on the season from stolen for stolen bases. And she just made it four for four. And now Maryland with a runner in scoring position with one out. Number nine batter JoJo McCray at the plate. Yeah, the aggression by these Maryland Terps continues with that stolen base right there. Could we potentially see a sacrifice bunt here with only one out? I believe that's definitely in play with the top half of the order coming up at the next batter. And that's going to be a ball. Two balls, one strike with one out. Jada McFarland on deck for Maryland. She's a 329 hitter, the best batter in this Maryland lineup. Bobian behind the count, two balls, one strike. Gets her pitch. And here she comes. That one's fouled off to the left side into the netting. Two balls, two strikes. The count with one out. Yeah, and I create really not having the greatest season so far, averaging 0 0.63 this season, but a career average of 259. So definitely has that memory of like what she can do, but so far, not the greatest season. McCray, ready for the 2-2 pitch from Bobian. Bobian comes set at the belt. Here's the offering. Swing and a miss. That's a drop third strike, though. Carson's got to throw it at first, but she doesn't. And Bobian was covering home plate, worried about Vulgaris coming from second to home. Vulgaris actually has to go back to second base. And the batter, McCray, going back to home. Did she foul I, I, it? I believe the home plate umpire is claiming this to be a foul ball. Yeah, that's, that's the only way she would be able to bat again. Interesting. So count remains three balls and two strikes. It should be two balls and two strikes, actually. The scoreboard says three balls and two strikes. But that was a foul ball, so two and two the count, I believe. Here comes the pitch. Strike three. Got her. No, no worries about that one. No questions there. That one is in the glove and through the bat of McCray. Make that two outs. Yeah, a lot of confusion right there, but, you know, Megan Bobian comes back and says, okay, I'll clear this up for you guys. It strikes the batter out. She handled it with a fastball that zoomed right by the bat of JoJo McCray. And third base coach for Maryland speaking to the umpire for a second. And the umpire's jotting something down in his book. And we're going to get a pinch runner at second. Fulgaris getting replaced by number 17, Marissa Borkowski. Borkowski actually served as a pinch runner in the previous game as well. Didn't steal a base or score a run. So she's just in the book as being a pinch runner with no stats. And now the top half, or the top of this Maryland order is at the plate in McFarland. But time is called. Julia Jimenez changing something with her glove, tightening the uh, strings. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe she's searching for something in there. There's a rock in there. <laughs> it's a good way to ice the batter. <laughs> yeah, right. You know. Bobian started her motion, but was uh, called for time from the second base umpire. I believe something's in there, in her glove. Maybe like a rock or something. I don't know. Whatever it is, Jada McFarland at the plate for Maryland with a runner in scoring position. Yeah, and Jada McFarland at the plate, as you mentioned. You go back earlier in the game just making that huge athletic dive in center field to keep this game t knotted up at one. Now, how cool would it be <laughs> if she's able to give Maryland the lead right now? 
definitely be an early candidate for most valuable player of the game. Right. As often happens, great field, great play in the field, great play at the plate, uh, hitting. So let's see if she can do that for Maryland. Michigan hoping that's not the case, and they can uh, get her out here to end the threat of Maryland potentially taking the lead in this fifth inning. Again, we're in the top half of the fifth inning. Score is all knotted up at one apiece with a runner on second base in Borkowski, the pinch runner, with two outs, Megan Bobian pitching to Jada McFarland. Bobian gets her sign, set at the belt, and she fires. And that one is a foul ball, it looks like, mm -hmm. but no sign from the home plate umpire. Uh, but Mor Borkowski did not take third base as she started to, but retreated to second, knowing that it was a foul ball, I believe. Yeah, and McFarland right now, you you have, for Maryland, you have your best hitter on there. She has the most runs batted in this season with 12. That one's to the first base side, but foul. To the left of Lou Allen. Lou Allen was pretty much on the first base line, ready for that one coming to her. But out of her reach to the left side. Now the count is no balls and two strikes after those two foul balls. With two outs, runner in scoring position at second base. Bobian gets the sign, fires. Outside. We're going to do it again with a count of one ball and two strikes now. McFarland has two previous plate appearances. Her first was a walk in which she was able to end up reaching third base but was stranded. And this time, she has a ground ball to the pitcher. Knocked down by Bobian. Bobian fires to home. And wow, Borkowski wow. tried to go from second to home. The third base coach sent her. And he says, that's on me. That is on him for sure. Yep. And she was dead to rights. Bobian mishandled the, uh, the ground ball and was going to fire to first, but wasn't going to get the uh, batter in McFarland, and so just threw home. And by the time she threw home, Borkowski was only about a third of the way home, so not even a shot to get her. Yeah, I, that went from disaster to a huge play for Michigan right there. And, you know, the third base coach thought that Bobian was going to throw uh, to first base to get the, get the out, but, you know, heads up play knowing where the players are at and getting the runner out at home to keep this game tied up at one. Exactly, and that will be ruled as a base hit. So after that top half of the fifth inning, Maryland had no runs in that inning on one hit and no errors, stranded one. And we go to the bottom half of the fifth inning with the score tied one to one. And leading off this bottom half of the fifth inning is Michigan's player of the game thus far in Taylor Bump. Yeah, now the question is, can Bump do it again? Because Michigan will need her to get on base, that's for yeah. sure. Since since her home run in the third inning, you know the Michigan bats came a lot came to life. Now she's up again, and you know they've slowly just been building on that momentum. Now can she add another one, either getting on base or getting another home run? And it looks like there's a pitching change for Maryland as Haley Ellefson is on the mound now. We saw Ellefson in the last game at the plate. And I believe we saw her earlier in this one at the plate. No, it was just in the last game. Ellefson went 0 for 3 with two strikeouts. She's hitting 136 on the year, so maybe her strong suit is on the mound. We shall see as she toes the rubber here for Maryland. Yeah, but <laughs> she got her hands full with the first uh, person to face of this inning. Most definitely. Taylor Bump at the plate. If not the hottest hitter in Michigan's lineup, she is tied for Lauren S tied with Lauren Esman for the hottest hitter in Michigan's lineup. Ellefson has a seven two nine ERA on the year. In 10 appearances, she hasn't started a game, so keeping up with the theme there, she has pitched in 16 innings and allowed 17 earned runs. And her opponents have had a 419 batting average. 
So Michigan drooling here, seeing Ellison on the mound, seeing if they can take advantage. Yeah, bump right there showing that she was going to go for a bunt. So Michigan right away showing to you that they want to get base runners out there. Yes, and that first pitch was a ball to Taylor Bump. Bump looked at it and didn't offer. So one ball and no strikes with nobody out in this bottom half of the fifth inning. And the Maryland coach is meeting with the umpire about something. Umpire going over to the Michigan bench. Going to the dugout. Motioning to the field. Maybe there was a substitution or something in the uh, defensive.